Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Today we're talking about the Castles of Burgundy, the card game. This is divided by Stefan Feld. Now, Stefan Feld, I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of his games. Feld fan numero uno. Are you number one? I'm, I'm sure. high up there on his list. All right, well, either way, the Castles of Burgundy, the main board game, is one of the games Jason and I agree on from him. It's, I don't think it's his best game. I think Bruges is his best game. But Castle of Burgundy is widely considered to be his best game, usually, by many it's people. It's one of his best. I like Macau a little better, but it's up there. Okay. <laughs> but anyhow, the Castle of Burgundy is a game that, while it looks pretty boring, the game it does it doesn't look that interesting, but the game uses dice, and you're using those dice to get tiles and then place those tiles onto a board. So you're using different dice that are rolled to put these out. This is going to put that whole thing in a card game. Yep. Does it work? Let's find out. So there's a lot of cards that are placed all over the table, but really everything is going to be taking place around this deck of action cards. Now this deck of action cards has cards with dice on them that are numbered from one to six, and you'll be using those dice numbers for a lot of things. And each card is one of different, uh, several types too. And what players are going to be doing is they're going to be trying to get these types and putting them in their estate. They'll put them here in front of their estate. Each type of card is worth victory points, but those points don't score unless you get three of that type. So you're trying to get them in sets of three. So three yellows is going to be four points. Four yellows, still four points. You need six yellows to get eight points. Uh, the purple cards are wild and can be put in any set, but if you have a set of three purples, they'll be worth six points. Now, each player is going to start with a random good. There are three types of goods. They are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. They'll also start with a random animal. There are four different animals in the games, pigs, chickens, cows, and sheep. And the animals don't matter, but at the end of the game, you're gonna get points for different animals. And you'll also start with an ore card. And players have a project area, which is here, and their estate area, and their storage area. Now, each round of the game, there are five rounds of the games, players are gonna have six actions. First, a bunch of cards are gonna be placed on in next to these numbers here that are numbered from one to six and the number is based on the number of players so let's say you're playing a three player game the number would be ten cards so I would just go one two three four five six now I'm gonna have four more cards to go to ten but when I turn these over I'm gonna match them up with the number that's shown on the die so there's seven eight nine and ten so these are the cards. These cards are placed out here next to these different numbers. Each player then is going to randomly take six cards from the deck and put them in front of them. One player is first. That per person has the first player marker. They're going to turn over two cards. And on these two cards, they ignore everything else but the numbers. And they'll use one of these numbers to take an action. When they do so, they'll discard it. Next turn, they'll turn over another card. And they'll use one of these two numbers to take an action. And they'll keep going until they've used all the different numbers to take actions. And then you use six turns, and then we go to the next round, and we keep track of rounds by these cards here, A, B, C, D, and E. Now, what do these numbers allow you to do action-wise? Well, one thing is you can take one of these cards, as long as you play the number of the row that that card's in. So if I use a four, I can take one of these, and I can put it in my project area. Now remember, you can have a maximum of three projects in your area, so you can discard one if you, put, if, if, if you have three and you want to take another one. You also want to move them from the project area to your estate. That's how you get points. To do so, you simply need to use a card that matches a number on that project when you move it over. When you move a card over to your estates, not only is it going to possibly score you points at the end of the game, but most of them will give you a special ability. For example, this one gives you two workers, which come from the pile here. Um, the, the mine will give you two ore. Some, this one here will get, let you get another good. So you draw one of the two goods, the, the good piles up here. Some will give you animals. There are some buildings that will give you special abilities. Maybe you can build another project, etc. There's all sorts of different things that you can happen. There's uh, even some really cool ones in here. The castles, they basically let you use another die immediately of your choice. Now, if you're the first person to get three of any type, you will also take a card here 
and you will get an extra victory point at the end of the game. And there's one for each of the colors here. If you're the first person to get one card of every color, you'll take this card, which is worth four victory points, and then three, two, and one. These are ways to get extra victory points. You also can use a card to sell goods. When you sell goods, you're going to use one of the two numbers at the top of goods you have, and you can sell all goods of that type. So if I have two cards here that have three and fours, and I use a three, I can sell both these goods. Both goods are going to be, turn into victory points for me for, at the end of the game, and they also will get me two of this ore. So each one will get you an ore. You can also discard a card to t take up to two of these workers, and you're like, what are these workers used for? Well, these workers can be used to add or subtract one from dice cards. So if I have a four die, but I really want to use a three, I can play one of these guys and turn it into a three or turn it into a five. So they're very useful that way. Why do I want these ore cards? Well, I can always discard three ore cards to draw three cards from the top of the draw pile and reveal them. I can immediately take one of them as a project or I can use one of the numbers on them as a regular action. And that's pretty much it. There's one final action where you can discard a, a, any card, a, a die. You can discard any die to um, uh, take, take an ore, or you can discard a card to transform it ore and workers into victory points. It's three per victory point, and then you simply take these generic victory points and put them here. When you make a set of three, the first person to do so, I said, gets these victory points, but everybody who does so we'll also take a reward on the round card. Making a set of three during round A is pretty hard, but if you do so, you can take three goods or two animals or, 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 you know, there's, or three workers, but you can see that the rewards are going to be less depending on what round it is, but there still is a reward for making a set of three. The game ends, oh, and also whenever someone sells something, they go first the next round, or they'll take the first person card. This is also worth a point at the end of the game. The game ends after everyone has taken six actions five times, so 30 actions in total. You then get one point if you have this. You'll take all the points in your estate for groups of threes, for bonuses that you have gotten, uh, for uh, goods that you have sold, for victory points, and for sets of different animals, like four different animals will get you uh, four points, three different animals gets you two points, two different animals gets you one point. You add all your points together, whoever has the most points is the winner. Okay, so there we have the Castles of Burgundy, the card game. It really, it's one of these card game versions of a board game which really doesn't change much at all. I mean, I'm struggling to think of anything major that it changed. Just really the bonus tiles where you get bonuses for having different things. Yeah, I guess the, the scoring where you want to get three of the same. In the original one, it was each thing scored each differently. Each section scored, and then you had the yellow cards were slightly different where you had the bonuses on the yellow cards in the original version. So you wanted the bonus where you had the most scoring things or the bonus where you had the most of this and you got points, but this streamlines it so well. Yeah, this, I mean, essentially you are, I mean, when we add up our scores at the end, it's like that. It's like, how much points do you get for animals? You got animals? Great. Boom, 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 done. I mean, you really, you're not getting a ton of points. You're just looking for sets of cards. Um, and it is certainly faster all around. Much faster. Um, this, th what does the box here say for time on it? Uh, it's on the back. On the back. It says 30 to 60 minutes. It was that. 60, I'm going to say it's 30 to 45. Yeah, 60 is the long side, unless you're really, really slow. But, but I see, mean, that's the thing about this game is one there's of, no slowness. One of the biggest problems I have with Castle Burgundy is it can be very analysis paralysis prone, where someone will sit there and go, hmm, because there's a lot of decisions to make, and then when they get it, where do I put it on my board? Here, when you get it, you stick it with the other cards. Yes. You don't have to decide where to put it on your board. Now, do you miss that board placement? No, I I mean, I love the original, like we said. I love the mechanics, and he took those same mechanics but turned into a more streamlined game, a game that I think would be more accessible to the general public who want to feel a Feldian feel to a game, and I think he did a wonderful job in removing the board but keeping the feel of the game. Yeah, see, when it comes to the card game of any game, sometimes they streamline it too much and it's not very good, like the Tigers and Euphrates card game. Um, sometimes they, they streamline it but take out a big chunk of the game. Kalos Magna Carta did that, mm -hmm. where it was still a good game, but it took out a big chunk of the game. Yes. This one feels the same. I mean, yeah, you missed the board, and I guess you can't use all the, there's like bonus boards and things, but it's so fast. 
Now, yes. And it still allows you to kind of mess with other people, like, oh, you have a one. Oh, that's the card you're going to take. Well, I better take that card now before I don't get it. And it works really well, two-player. Really well. I was very yes. surprised by that. I mean, that being... That may be one of the most fun two-player games I've played in a long time. Yes, just a fun game in general. This is a game, I mean, if you like Castles of the Burgundy, you're going to love it. I don't know quite if I like it more or less or what at this point. More! It's pretty close to more, though, and I, I never thought I'd say that, but I think I could play this five times over one game of Castles of Burgundy and enjoy it that much. Wait till Castles of Burgundy, the dice game comes out. But um, <laughs> one of the things I like about this game is how fast it, 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 it moves but you also still feel a good chunk of stress in it. Like, yes. oh, I have two of these castle cards. I really want that third castle card. Oh, I got two boat cards. I really want that third boat card. But should I get that first, or should I do this other action, which is going to give me more things, things to do? And I also like the three silvers and using the workers. It's really easy. The only part where it would slow down is when you're first playing... And you need to look up the... The icons on the buildings are a little small, right? The cards, since the cards are yeah. hobbit-sized cards, some of those you have to like, uh, what are they trying to do? Okay, they're moving this here. So that might slow you down a bit on the buildings, but it's still pretty simple. Yeah, and they essentially do the same things as the buildings in the original. So there's the one building where you can take the purple or the dark green or the whatever, and then the other building that you could take the light green and the blue. And they're basically the same buildings as the other one. It's just... The symbology is slightly different, but the buildings do the same functions, and it really, really captures the feel of. Well, what's your of awesomeness stuff. rating for this? My one? awesomeness rating on this is a nine. This is wow. one of, this is one of Feld's best, and I, I <laughs> love it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a little more conservative in this one. I'm gonna say an eight. Uh, I, I think it's an excellent card game. Um, still looks a little bland, but it does look better than the board game actually. Fast and fun for me. Three places the board game. He hasn't decided yet on that one. It's going to co-join the board game because I have all the, I have all the expansions. I have all those extra you maps. You could actually store this inside the board, in game. The board game. Probably. Anyway, that's the Castle of Burgundy, the card game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.